struggling to decorate your Minecraft gardens and find that you're low on inspiration? Well, you're on the right video, as in this mini series of three episodes, I'm going to show you three ways to design your garden. I'll be using the same area and the same building to show you how we can make the most of the space we've got, but to also give you a beautiful result every time. Today's episode will focus on fairy core, so expect an ethereal garden filled with a variety of gorgeous flowers and small eye-capturing areas. So let's start out with digging some blocks around the sides of the house. I always do this to get a feel for how I want my flower beds to look, and rather than making your bed in one straight line, try digging some blocks further out than the rest. It just helps to make it look more natural. I find it looks better if the beds aren't symmetrical on all sides. It gives more of a cottage garden look, but if you wanted a more modern style for your garden, symmetrical could definitely be a good option. I've chosen to put flower beds on all outside walls of the house. This is personal preference and it also depends on the shape of the building that you're working with. I do think though that adding beds around the back of the house is a great filler if you're not planning to decorate that part of the garden. It just easily fills the space while looking like you've made an effort. When you're happy with the layout of the beds, randomly fill them in with a mix of moss and coarse dirt. Using blocks other than grass helps to differentiate the flower beds to the lawn. I usually go back and extend the beds later on if I want more space, so don't feel like what you've done has to stay exactly the same. Let's go round and finish filling the empty spaces on all sides of the house with the moss and dirt blocks. Let's make some bushes by using leaf blocks. I always opt for a dark oak leaf so they don't blend in too much with the standard oak blocks. Let's add a few bushes higher up on the wall to give our greenery some height Leaf blocks really help to give the illusion of a fuller flower bed. Notice that I am leaving some gaps between the bushes, just to free up space for flowers and plants, and having a variety of height and different items against the wall makes for a more interesting view. We're going to add in some grasses and flowers now, so take some foliage and place it down. Try to make the middle row of your bed quite tall, and decrease the size of the flowers down on the front and sides of the bed. I tend to think of a sort of triangle when adding plants. Have your side plants start small and then increase to the tip of the triangle, which will be your taller plants in the middle. You want your plants at the front to be on the smaller side too for height definition. Start placing grasses, ferns and flowers down on all of your beds now. You might remove some of your current greenery to work around your vision. I've chosen to use lots of pinks and purple flowers in this garden to complement the colour of the windows and other colours like white to balance it out. If you're struggling with colour combos, maybe take a look at your house and pick out a colour from a small area of the build that could really be brought out by using certain flowers. Get creative and try new colours and heights together, there's no wrong or right way to do it. Now let's finish planting all of our beds around the house. A path leading up to the house is a really nice simple way of decorating and it fills up the space and makes the area look a little bit more put together. So let's put one in using a mix of cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, dirt paths and moss for a variety of patterns and textures. For this style of garden I prefer to create curved paths rather than it being one straight line and one of the things I find useful is starting with both ends of your path and then joining them in the middle. It just helps to know which direction your path is going in. Let's look at extending one of our beds to fill the space a bit more. I'm adding a curve to the bed and following the shape of the path just to help with the structure. Once again, fill the bed in with moss blocks and dirt. Adding this extra bed allows us to incorporate more flowers into the garden and make for more pleasant viewing as you walk up towards the house. I'm going to add in some bushes first for height and now let's plant some more flowers and grasses. I'm sticking with the plants from the other beds, but also now incorporating a few different flowers to show that it's a different part of the garden. I want this section to be really full and leafy, so having the bushes followed by the tall grasses and wide larger plants helps to give this illusion. I'm going to look at making another area in our garden, so a pond is a fantastic way to take up space and make your garden look busier, so dig out a shape for a pond that ideally isn't just one big square. Change some of the pond floor to stone or another block and spam with bone meal and any fish spawn egg to add life to it. Next, I'm adding some stone around the sides of my pond for a more interesting look, though you could use whichever block you wanted. I choose stone as it matches the floor of the pond and I also want to stay away from the cobblestone to show the difference in garden areas. Moss is another great addition to add to the pond sides. More foliage is a must to make a pond look natural and lifelike, so I'm adding more dark oak leaves around that area. 
You may also want to add some grasses and flowers back in. I've gone for daffodils and lily of the valley for a bit of colour and like I said before to show that this part of the garden is a bit different to the rest. Just to add a little more to the space, why not have a path going up around the pond to the side or the back of the house? That way it opens up that area for more decorating opportunities. Really loving how this is looking now and hopefully if you're applying these tips to your garden, you're impressed of how your results look so far. If you're 100% happy with what we've done, you can finish your garden here, but like me, you may have extra space around your house that you want to take advantage of. I want to turn the area to the left of my house into a small patio seating area, and you may want to add a little focal feature into your garden too. A fountain could be another lovely addition to your space. To open up that area, I'm going to make a path through the middle of my bed, which will lead us over there. You could build a path around your bed if you so wish, but I think that the path flows better this way. Like before, fill it in with your desired blocks, so in this case a mix of cobblestone, moss and dirt path blocks. If you're trying to create an eye-capturing space, why don't you surround that desired area with more flower beds? I'm just now digging out some more beds which will enclose the focal point and filling them in with our flower bed blocks, which again are moss and dirt. Let's start by adding in our bushes and tall grasses and then follow up with adding more flowers. These beds are just an extension of the original ones, so I'm actually going to use the same flowers as before. Like with all of these beds, you really want them to look full, luscious and eye-catching, so go crazy with different colours, flower variants and heights. I finished planting these beds and I also added some flowers to the next block up for a more fuller, taller look. I'm going to start working on my little patio area by adding some lanterns for light. Lanterns don't have to look out of place. If I can, I always try to group them in threes and putting them at different heights can make them look visually attractive as well as providing a source of light. I've just made a quick seat just to figure out where I want my furniture to go before placing my patio and granite is the block I've chosen with a bit of moss around the sides. If you have access to CIT packs, I definitely advise adding some items for more detail. So I've used various CITs from the Garden Breeze catalog, including a wheelbarrow with some flowers and an iron table and chair set. I extended the back of the patio for more space for these items. I've tried to go with lighter white and birch items for the decor in this area. We're nearing the end of our building, so let's have a look at what we've done today. So I've added a few extra CITs off camera and some lanterns on fence posts for additional lighting during the night, but let's summarise what we've done together. We've made a rustic looking path up to the house, complemented by beds full of gorgeous flowers and bushes to bring some colour and beauty to the garden. We've made a pond filled with life and added a small amount of simple greenery around the sides of the water. And we've decorated a little patio area with a table and chairs to make for a nice place to sit in the evenings. Any guesses on what the next garden style will be? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.